Hey guys, Brett Elliott with Atmex here. This is part two of our interview with Trevor Raymond, the CEO of the World Platinum Investment Council. In our first segment, we took a close look at a constrained supply situation. And in this video, we are talking about global demand. We're getting some inside knowledge on platinum's uses in the decarbonization industry. If you want to see more of these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. It makes a huge difference in our ability to keep producing these for you. And now, to part two. And, uh, we are seeing, if I recall correctly from the latest Platinum uh, Quarterly from the World Platinum <laughs> Investment Council, it looks like we're looking at shortages of about minus 1% year over year in platinum supply and uh, demand growing to plus 28% year over year. So there's a, a bit of an imbalance there. Um, and it sounds like a large amount of that's being driven by glass capacity in China. Um, so can you, can you tell us a little bit more about platinum's role in glass? Sure. So you're quite right. I mean, I think the, the two big dr demand drivers are industrial applications and the automotive application, which is kind of industrial, but we treat it as automotive separately for, for a bunch of reasons. So in terms of industrial, if you look at the last 15 years, platinum's industrial demand growth has typically been twice global GDP growth um, on a fairly consistent basis. And it's the, it's the one demand segment that's most closely correlated to, to global growth. So if mm -hmm. you have more growth, you use more platinum. And it's used in so many, I suppose, the easy one is glass. Well, one other good example is, uh, is fertilizer. So if the world needs more food, it needs more fertilizer. You need nitric acid to make fertilizer. All wow. nitric acid plants in the world use platinum gauze to make it. And they either last sort of six months or 18 months, depending on the, on the, on the type of technology. So demand for food goes up and you use more platinum to make nitric acid. So that linkage is, is normal. And in many processes, by adding platinum, you reduce the energy requirement and you increase the yield of whatever you're producing. And, and that applies across a whole range of chemical production. So as the world needs more stuff, you typically use more platinum. And that's why this growth has been quite strong. And in addition, um, because platinum brings down the cost and increases the yield, that's why there's even a greater use of it uh, when volumes uh, get larger. In terms of the glass question that you that you focused in on, um, over the last three years, there's been massive glass capacity expansion in China. And the specific type of glass is actually glass fiber. Hmm. So glass fiber is being used more widely, uh, turbine blends for, for uh, wind uh, turbines. And in addition, insulation for building material, uh, some of which is blown, but a lot of it is drawn. And where it's used is that uh, you get this massive um, pool of liquid glass that's about I don't know, half an acre in size. Uh, and you've got all these little bushings and the bushings are actually made of platinum and, and rhodium to keep the aperture the right size so they can draw off the high quality glass mm. fiber. And that capacity has been increasing significantly in China, despite China's sort of economic uh, performance coming off a little. Uh, and the other thing is that the capacity that's needed, uh, it's a lot easier to raise finance in China than it, than it is in the West at the moment. So in a way, uh, platinum demand is a little de-risked uh, from the economic outlook in that area. So you'll see it's, it, it, it goes in fits and starts because capacity will you know, happen every, every couple of years rather than, than consistently every year. And then the balance, all of those catalysts wear out a little and that's almost the top up demand. So you've got an industrial demand segment that's actually growing quite strongly uh, over the next while. Has the uh, massive increases in the price of rhodium caused a little bit of a switch over to platinum as well in some of that segment? Hugely so. So those <laughs> those bushings, it, it was quite a simple substitution uh, uh, issue there because when the price of rhodium went to $10,000 an ounce in, in, the, in, in the mid 2000s, what happened is that typically you would use 20% rhodium and 80% platinum. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, they cut that down to maybe 10% or 5%. And then as the price of rhodium came from $10,000 down to like $700, and obviously they increase the ratio of rhodium. With the recent uh, spike of the rhodium price, it just caused almost total chaos. <laughs> so, so most of those bushings, so you know, if you take the rhodium out of the bushing, it lasts less long. So you have to then replace those bushings more frequently, and that's an operational cost uh, mm -hmm. in glass manufacturing. So they, some of them have got, got it down below 5%, you know, 3%. 
the, the interesting thing was is that everybody suddenly realized that they had all this rhodium stock that they were using. And some of those glass uh, companies actually took the rhodium and recycled it and sold it into the market. And in such a small market, and that's why you've seen significant weakness in the rhodium price recently. And it was because of that recycling that came back to market from, from those uh, Chinese uh, plants. Amazing. It's, uh, I think, you know, for our audience uh, that may not be aware, um, you know, the, the price spiked to, I think I saw a number of 14,000 an ounce. And I, I think I saw someone saying it went up even higher than to that. 30, to, nearly 30,000, $30,000 30, yeah. an ounce rhodium. I saw, yeah. I saw 29, 29 yeah. some change. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the price of rhodium went up quite a lot. <laughs> Um, and right now, I, I just checked it the other day. It's still over six thousand dollars an ounce, sure. so still very expensive. And rhodium is, uh, I think, uh, almost three times rarer than platinum, or or some somewhere around there, a hundred times rarer than gold, something like that. So, so again, for the for the person considering a platinum investment, why mm -hmm. rhodium is quite important is that firstly, um, rhodium, palladium, and platinum come out of the same rock in South Africa, yep. so, so they're mined together. The other thing is that pretty much all the cars in the U.S. have typically been gasoline vehicles and your catalysts were palladium and rhodium. So palladium does an excellent job and that's where the substitution on a one-to-one -one basis can happen with platinum. But rhodium actually gets rid of the NOx emissions out of a gasoline engine and you just can't do without rhodium. Mm -hmm. So the fact that rhodium is still essential to, to gasoline vehicles in the U.S. is really quite important and the combination of either palladium and rhodium or platinum and rhodium is what increases that rhodium demand but also the need for platinum and palladium. So it's quite important just to see that it works together. I don't think investors, it's, rhodium's a very tiny market, uh, huge numbers, let's not, uh, let's not recommend that one today. But no, in terms no, of no. platinum and palladium, I don't think there are any, important. Yeah. Any, any, any rhodium coins or bars yeah, out there. Correct. So, correct. But yes, there is, there is a bit of interplay between platinum and the other, um, the other group metals there. Correct. So uh, good, good for people to know. Um, so glass, you know, uh, great. Um, one question that might come up is, you know, this, this glass fiber, uh, production, it's being used in all kinds of things. Uh, is there a recession risk with that? Is it, is it possible we'll see demand for that product decline if we enter into a recession that I keep hearing is coming? Uh, <laughs> So certainly, I mean, I think the industrial application, if you have a global recession, uh, typical industrial activity is cut back mm -hmm. and the need for glass would, would be cut back. So if there is a recession and it impacts China and it is sustained, then certainly that would come off uh, as would, would all the others. And I mean, I use the glass fiber example because it's, it's, it's quite a, a large component of what's going on. But equally, high quality glass for TV screens, for um, mm. your mobile phone, LCDs. all of that is uh, platinum is very much uh, heavily used in, in that manufacture. So again, yes, if there's a recession, it does impact it. But to the, to the effect that you don't have glass capacity additions, so you don't see these big changes year on year, mm -hmm. but the ongoing use of that metal still stays in play. So industrial does tend to generally go up with GDP, but then have fits and starts from capacity additions. Perfect. And we're also seeing increases in demand from the auto industry, um, but there's kind of a, a dual action play going on here with the rise in interest rates. Uh, it's, it's affected the recycling of older autos. And so catalytic converters have, I think, somewhere between like three and seven grams of platinum in them. Um, and as you'd mentioned, uh, recycling contributes, um, I think you said two million, two million ounces. ounces out of the yeah. six. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about this dynamic, how, how both uh, auto demand is increasing, but also contributing to the supply deficit. Yeah, so there's, there's sort of two aspects of, of counterintuitive here. Yeah, a little bit. So, so, the, <laughs> so the, the, the first one is true. So if you if you look at the recycling supply, the two million ounces, and, and we when we ended on supply, we probably should have touched on on recycling supply. Is that um, that recycling supply has been heavily down because people are driving their vehicles longer. And as a result, there's fewer scrapped vehicles and therefore that recycling supply is, is constrained and has come down a bit and is expected to, to stay quite muted. The, the first reason for that coming down was the chip shortages. Mm. So over the last three years, the automakers have been unable to make enough new vehicles to meet demand. And that's led to most people driving their cars longer. Mm. Added onto that was the concerns about inflation, a poor economic outlook, and definitely interest rates. So the, the cost of actually uh, financing a car went up significantly. 
So there has been a significant drop in demand for vehicles, but the automakers are still catching up so that their production levels can even meet the reduced demand. So if you look at the charts, oh. what we saw during COVID was that there was a heavy drop in the amount of vehicles needed, but that's still growing back up. And it hasn't quite got to the point where even the reduced demand is met by the automaker production. So that's why this year and a little bit into next, you are seeing more vehicles being produced than they were the previous year, even though demand has dropped off steadily. And what's filling that gap are the uh, the used vehicles and the, the length of time that people are using those used vehicles. So as a result, recycling supply is down. And then the counterintuitive thing is to say, well, you know, if, if, if interest rates are high, if people are struggling to buy a new vehicle, cost of living crisis, why are you using more platinum in vehicles? And the answer is a little bit of more production, not a lot, but primarily because palladium had stayed way above the price of platinum for several years, mm -hmm. that substitution is starting to come through. We estimate it's about 450,000 ounces this year wow. of platinum that's being used in, in place of palladium. And remember, the US and China pretty much have only uh, gasoline vehicles. It was only Europe that had a lot of uh, diesel passenger vehicles. So that use of, uh, of, of platinum going into gasoline vehicles is what's driving the platinum automotive demand quite heavily. So you've got this combination of strong industrial, uh, exposed a little bit certainly to, uh, to, to poor economic outlook, but the, the demand growth in, in automotive for platinum is being heavily driven by substitution for palladium. And that's why right now you've got this constrained supply, million ounce deficit, strong demand growth in industrial, but strong demand growth in automotive. And for those thinking about platinum, that kind of doesn't make sense. So industrial <laughs> metal, it should be doing badly, right? Uh, there's, there's fewer vehicles being produced, it should be doing badly, right? And actually both of those are not quite true. So thanks for the opportunity of sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, actually, you know, another um, uh, topic related to this, we should probably cover briefly, um, you know, is the advent of new types of vehicles hitting the market? Um, I saw a stat from CME Group saying that if uh, fuel cell electric vehicles really take off and they have favorable policies behind them, we could see an increase in demand of 3 million ounces of oh. platinum. Um, that's huge, uh, obviously. But it, but do we have any concern about uh, you know the advent of EVs affecting platinum either midterm or long term? Sure. So uh, when we started speaking, the third point that I, that I raised is that um, the ability for a, a new demand segment to mm -hmm. drive demand growth is quite unusual. Um, so first off is electrolyzers. So if you take wind or solar and you electrolyze water to produce hydrogen, that's green hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And if you put that hydrogen through a fuel cell vehicle, not only are your emissions zero, but you've removed fossil fuels from the chain. Now, five years ago, the hydrogen economy was seen a bit like a science project. But as we've gone through COVID, as the severe weather events have happened around the world, there's a much stronger recognition that decarbonization is essential. China's committed to 2060 decarbonization. And more recently, the Inflation Reduction Act in the US, you're seeing $66 billion being committed to, to carbon reduction. So platinum's role in that is quite important. And you've got a, maybe one and a half, two million ounces over the, the 10 years for electrolyzer use. And in terms of uh, uh, fuel cell vehicles, you will have electric vehicles. That's necessary. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. You will also have fuel cell vehicles. And the real concern was that there's a number of uh, countries in Europe that are mooting banning internal combustion engines. There's a lot of people thinking, even you've had some people on your show suggesting that all vehicles uh, in the US will be battery uh, by 2035. Now, unfortunately, there's not enough battery materials available. Um, the grids around the world can't support that kind of recharging infrastructure. Mm. So whether you get to 30, 40 or 50% battery, the other 50, 60 or 70% are internal combustion and they'll need to be CO2 efficient and they'll need, uh, they'll need cat catalysis. So what we're assuming is that there's quite heavy penetration of battery, maybe up to 40% over 15 years, which seems to be the optimistic consensus. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition uh, to, to, to that happening, you will have some fuel cell vehicles, not passenger, but heavy duty. So right now, to make a battery truck, you're using payload. To, to stop a, a long-haul truck for 10 hours to recharge just doesn't work. Whereas you can put a, a fuel cell into a heavy duty truck and you can get 1,200 uh, mile range. 
and you can do coast to coast US with just six spots where you can refill fuel. So we think over the next two to three years, there will be a reasonable volume for electrolysis, something coming through on heavy duty, but that grows out 10 years. And the interesting thing is, is that to say to somebody, you want to use gold to preserve value, what's the price of gold going to be in 10 years time? And boy, that'll be a whole show on its own. <laughs> but to suggest that platinum actually is going to be needed for decarbonization for the next 10 years, rising to the number you mentioned of two to three million extra ounces, that suddenly says actually what's in place right now says that this metal is probably going to be more valuable then. So you've got a, a, a far easier logic for someone typically that's never owned gold to say, actually, this looks like an interesting place for me to preserve wealth. I think that's quite important to a lot of, uh, a lot of your uh, viewers. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you'll join us in the next segment where we talk about investing in platinum. If you're convinced that platinum investing is interesting, as Trevor says, you'll want to watch this next one closely. And again, if you haven't done so yet, please like, subscribe, and share this video to support our work. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh,